Uh, now uh, continue on the uh, uh, our session on the uh, on rhythm problems. We have the pleasure to have Dr. Tazneem Nakvi, who's the director of the Echo Lab. Although she's the director of the Echo Lab, she's really fascinated by uh, 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 hemodynamics and effects of pacing uh, in the heart. And again, trying to keep all the things that are very um, uh, pertinent to clinical practice. One of the things that we sh uh, have seen a lot and starting to understand better is our V-paced uh, cardiomyopathy, or problems with excessive right ventricular pacing. And Dr. Nakvi has been studying this for, for many years, so we'll be delighted to have her uh, give us an update. Thank you. Um, thank you to the course organizers for inviting me, and thank you for staying to, uh, for the last uh, talk of this session. You took my thunder away. I was going to disclose that I'm not an electrophysiologist. I'm an echocardiographer, but that's who I am, and do have an interest in pacemakers. So I'm going to start with a patient. We are going to discuss this case. Uh, we are going to then review the literature and come back to the case. So please remember this um, uh, for your treatment decision. This is actually a patient who Dr. Shri may remember him. Uh, I met him for the first time in May 2015, as, uh, and he was meeting him the second time, 76-year-old male with marked shortness of breath and repeated hospitalizations over the last six months outside of our state. Uh, he had come to Mayo in 2007 for his atrial flutter ablation, and because of some concern about his AV conduction, he underwent a dual-chamber pacemaker implantation in 2007. And then subsequently, he also developed um, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. He has multiple other comorbidities, not uncommon uh, to you all and to us. Uh, he has peripheral arterial disease. He has diabetes, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea on CPAP. And he also has pulmonary fibrosis of uh, unclear etiology with a DLCO of 54% eight years ago. Renal dysfunction at the time he presented to us, his creatinine was 2.2, his anti-pro BNP is over 4,000. And somewhere in the same year, in 2015, he had undergone a coronary angiogram outside, which actually did not show significant coronary artery disease. These are his medications. He's on dual therapy uh, for his atrial fibrillation. He's on uh, Coumadin. He's on beta blockers, receptor blocker, diuretics, actually a fairly good amount of dosage of diuretics, as well as propafenone to keep him in sinus rhythm as he keeps developing heart failure. <coughs> And then he's taking medication for his diabetes and pulmonary disease and peripheral vascular disease. This is his chest x-ray uh, when he came to us. And uh, you can appreciate that there is a right atrial lead sitting here. There's a pacemaker. There's a right ventricular lead. There is, this is a PA film, so there is some cardiomegaly. And even though he